Folks, welcome back to 12 Hats Radio. And today we've got Dan Sutergren from Manchester in the UK. He's great to come onto the show. And Dan, for my guests, can you just give us a rundown on what you're all about? Well, good Lord, that's a, that's a, that's a big one. Um, but uh, you can I suppose that's one way of doing it because uh, yeah. I'm an old man. I'm 44. So uh, if I tell you everything, good Lord. All started in 1976. When, oh, I best not do that. Um, so <laughs> give me the brief. <laughs> <laughs> bit of the whole thing, uh, Monty Python-esque. Um, I, I help a lot of companies uh, with digital transformation. Um, I've had my own agencies. I've had a few of those. We've already had about 10 companies uh, so far. I now work at The Landing, which in uh, Manchester or in Greater Manchester, a place called Salford. There's another place called Media City, which you may or may not have heard of. It's where the BBC is now based. Mm. And we're the innovation and tech hub um, up there. And yeah, I also... Right. Uh, Invested in a company called Flock, which is an HR tech company, um, which uh, which is kind of which has it's remote work and it's got a, we've got a couple of bases in different places. So uh, yeah, I have the joy of uh, of training lots of companies in social media stuff, um, and obviously before uh, COVID, it was all done live. And yep. uh, if, if you look on LinkedIn and Google, you know I, I do some work on the BBC. Don't like to talk about it, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Google it and I'll ball the heck out of you with loads of other stuff. But, uh, but great to be on the show. Yeah. And I'm looking at your bio, I think we're kind of saying piece of the pod because I always liked about the you know, future of work and all what, what's COVID doing to our you know, marketing mm. workspaces and all of that. Uh, where do you see the future of um, work heading? Wow. I mean, that, yeah, again, that's, uh, that's almost a bigger question than, uh, than who, am I, who am I at the age of 44. So... You know, as uh, as other famous folk said years ago, that in some decades or some decades, very little happens, and then in weeks, decades happens, mm. and that's what's happening at the moment. You know, I've had the joy of um, working and trying to persuade people around this digital proposition for about a decade, and literally in the last ten weeks, everything's happened. You know, so I've been saying to people, "Oh, you should use Zoom rather than having to go on the train or go and buy planes." Now everyone's using Zoom. Uh, you know, I've been saying to people, move to the cloud because that's a more efficient way of doing your business. Change your culture so you become more agile and have more people remote working. COVID, of course, is a lot of people have called COVID uh, or the coronavirus uh, a great leveler. And I, and I don't see it as the leveler or as a, or as a disabler. I see it as an accelerator. Mm. It has accelerated most of the most logical progressions that we've had in life, especially around yeah. business. Not realizing it, it's accelerated those at a very, very quick uh, propensity. So, you know, the, the other saying is that the future is everywhere. It's just unevenly distributed. So if you, you, know, you guys are nearer to, to China and to Hong Kong and to, to Japan than we are, uh, and, you know, and if you, I go, I've been over there a couple of times, gone to Shanghai and with Huawei and with other people, and, um, you know, they're doing a lot of this future propositioning already. Uh, yeah. You could argue I mean, that's, maybe that's how they dealt with, if they have dealt with the virus. And again, I'm not going to say that they have. I'm just going to read what I know in the news. And of course, the Australian version of the news might be very different to the UK version. It'd be interesting to know, but that's a different conversation. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, you know, yeah, you've been a bit nearer. But from what I can see, they seem to have not necessarily dealt with the virus, but certainly have had different ways of combating it and mm. also going back to this new normal. But of course, their technology is so much more advanced than it is in the UK. So yeah. they have things like 5G in their smart cities and we don't have that. We have five no. G. We have five G in the landing, and maybe in eighty little patches in England, but we don't have it in every in every home, even slightly. We don't. You know, sometimes we don't even have four G or not even broadband. Sometimes, um, and of course, that is the thing. The future of work will be around technology, and those who have this new technology will be able to work everywhere. They'll be remote workers. Um, I think I don't know what it's like in Australia. In I think it was in America about a year ago. It's about three to four percent remote working um it would be fascinating to see um what it's going to be like in the next two months mm. um because i have a feeling i don't know what your feeling is dave but i have a feeling that the future of work is going to be a much more blended approach um we're not going to be heading into the factories and the offices quite as much as we used to no uh, we're not going to head down the mines as much as we used to either you know <laughs> we've got to remember that you know i was trying to, i was explaining this on the radio the other day and and the person got quite, quite irate about it. And I was like, you've got to remember, the office is just the concept that came from Victorianized, you know, the factories. And the factories then had an office for the bosses. And that became an office. And then we became knowledge workers. So we all went to the office. It doesn't mean it's the best thing. 
it's just like an appendix almost, you know, yeah. it just exists there. Even though ironically, of course, the appendix has a great function, but there we go. Um, terrible metaphor. But you know, it, it, it's come from, you know, it's come from something else. It hasn't come from the fact that it's the best way to do things. It was yep. just the most logical way to do it at the time. And now the future of work, well, the future of work may well be unlike anything we've ever seen. It, we may well be going through this, this paradigm uh, shift uh, or paradigm shift as, as the saying goes. You know, literally this, um, if you're into your, your kind of KSN versus Kukagen and kind of, you know, these, these moments. But the idea that business can just simply take 1% and increase itself and get better and better and more efficient, that whole way of thinking, I think now, has come under immense scrutiny. And a yeah. lot of people are looking at home and thinking, wait a minute, what have I been up to? And a lot of businesses, unfortunately, will go under based on the principles of, of just them being old fashioned. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and unfortunately, and it's horrible because you know, and I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm very like, if I do get uh, the virus, I'm because of other things, uh, my health conditions and other things, I'm very likely to die from it. I'm not, this is not flippant. I'm not flippant about the virus at all. My point though is, a lot of businesses that, that the whole point was to get people back into a lot of business got to be careful words here, but their core proposition was we all stand together or sit together in this room and we create value. Yeah. And the future of work might not be there at all. You, no. you might be a company, not because you all go to work in the office. You're a company because you all like each other and you work every, anywhere in the world together. And a lot of people uh, don't like that, especially um, office managers. Yes, <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Um, well, actually, the Japanese have got a concept that we're moving towards called Society 5.0. And it's all about this you know, future of work, but it's also about having a sort of like a digital renaissance. Renaissance. Ah, renaissance yeah, yeah. With, with, um, so we're working with AI, we're working with automated workflows. Um, and we could basically, it's freeing up the human race for more creative pursuits and absolutely you know yeah. a lot of people are looking at things like ai and again you know we have the joy of working at the landing we work with ai propositions and you know this, these are the guys that we're working with you know ar and vr i had an augmented reality company 10 years ago so you know i've been kind of a stupidly ahead of the game for a little bit i mean please mm. don't be that game you have to have very deep pockets <laughs> i've lost a lot of money in in there uh, you know if i start working in holograms dave you'll know to tell me to stop because uh, i don't want to <laughs> i've been ahead of a, a few a few too many times so i'm not doing that um, yeah well don't want to come what? back as rimmer <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, 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 don't do it don't do it you're gonna don't lose loads of money yeah yeah I've, I've, had, I've had seven companies and believe me some of them funky i did a lot of a couple of years ago i did a lot of work with micro bioderm uh, and, the, and the kind of health tech revolution. I think that was probably a bit before my time, ahead of the time as well, but that's a, that's a different thing. So yeah, this whole Japanese uh, thing, which I love, and I love the fact they're going to build that, uh, potentially build any anyway, they were building, uh, a kind of smart city from the ground up mm. uh, in that Fuji one, um, actually just owned by Toyota, but there we go. Um, you know, Google start, started trying to do it in Canada and that's kind of got a little bit scrapped. And, um, and for me, it's, I'll be honest with you, Dave, it's, the technology has been here for a long, long time. It's actually the cultural change that mm. people have had to make. Yeah. Yeah. So I've always, I'm a technologist. So I've always looked at it and gone, right, it's technology that changes the world. You know, that's why you start your own businesses. That's why I've had nine or 10 businesses. That's why I had, it was into augmented reality and had a hemp company 25 years ago, you know, trying to change the world through businesses that I could start and businesses I can help like flock and the landing. But actually the big changes come from culture. Hmm. You know, the, 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 the joke, is, well, it shouldn't really be a joke, but the kind of observation that, um, that some people have made is, you know, who was the person who led the digital transformation in your company? You know, was it the CIO? Was it the CTO? Was it the CEO? Or was it actually, was it COVID? And the answer is it was coronavirus. Yeah. Coronavirus has, has fundamentally changed the way everyone's looked at it. It's nothing to do with our bosses because it's outside of our boss's control. And mm. you know, I think a lot of our bosses might say, get back to work in the office. Yes. <laughs> And they're not going to be able to. So that's my, my, I suppose my thing about the future of work is, you know, we will be augmented, as in we will use technology a lot more, yeah. uh, like SaaS, pro SaaS propositions like Flock, which helps people pick or, because you can get to choose your values through the SaaS uh, pro proposition that we've made, you can see whether you'd be good for remote working or not. It's, it's a way of seeing the values of the whole company and culture mapping the company, which is why I invested in it a couple of years ago. Cool idea, yeah? Uh, nice SaaS product. That will use a bit of AI behind it when we when we get around to that. Um, but AI will be a huge thing, and AI hmm. will be literally like like electricity. And the people who don't use AI in their business 
won't have a very effective business. Yeah. And I'm talking about all businesses, not just tech companies, every business. Hmm. If you're a restaurant and you're not using some AI in your restaurant, then that restaurant will not be as effective as the one you know, that is using it. Yeah, no absolutely. What, yeah. Same with technology. It's like, people are saying, well, it's the person with the fire. Wow, they seem to have done well. Yeah, well, that's kind of it. You know, AI will be like this new electricity or new fire. It will be powering most things. You then look at things like VR and AR, which I think will be transformative. But I think there's certain sectors they're going to work better in. You know, so in, uh, Industry 4.0 is a key one, and training and education, absolutely. And then, of course, 5G is your underpinning. You know, without 5G, it's a bit like um, a bit like the Industrial Revolution without water and without canals. You know, it just doesn't work. If you can't power the mills, then you can't have the factories. It's just yeah. how, it, how it works. Yeah, and you can sit there and say, oh, no. I think 5G kills bees. Well, it doesn't. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> if it does, then you know we've been lied to by scientists with some fundamentals for about 100 years. We have much deeper issues about science. <laughs> we have much yes, problems. absolutely. <laughs> this, is not a, this is not a tobacco cancer moment. This is literally a yeah. fundamental of all scientific knowledge. <laughs> and that's a big one. So, yeah, so I think you know, they're, they're, the, they're, the, oh, sorry, they're the fun ones. The, 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 the 5G is the enabler of all of it. Yeah. yeah, the AI is the bit that kind of goes on the top, and then you've got the chance to play around with 3D printing and IoT and all sorts of stuff for your businesses. Um, but of course, with some small businesses, and I work with a lot of small businesses, have helped lots of people start their own business as well. You know, it isn't relevant for everyone, but AI will be, and whether you know it or not, you'll be using it. You know, so whether your SaaS product that you use is uses AI, mm. or whether whether you've got an you know a secretary that now is a virtual robot because yeah. it actually just as simple to do that and actually it's better for everyone so i'm totally with you i think that this the japanese idea will be a friend of mine called tom cheese right who's a futurist he, he talks about the fact that the future of work you'll be getting you won't be getting rid of your job but you'll be getting rid of a lot of your work yeah that makes sense to me. like the grinding out stuff that actually the stuff you might not like which actually might be about 80 percent of your job mm. um, you know, because they because computers can do that bit it's better than than humans can the mm. grinding and process what well, they're not good at is things like this i don't think we're going to get well actually they, even now you can see it can't you can see ai reporters happening yeah you know, and ai writers and ai creatives so you know who knows yeah. what's going to be left yeah i can actually see well ai like if you be alexa and your google you can have like an ai dj inside your home Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it'll, be like, that, that, it'll be like your voice, but then it'll be just pre-programmed, you know, responses. So you can be nowhere in the world. You can just ask it and it'll just pop, pop up. I can see that. Yeah, I think you're absolutely, I, think, yeah. Yeah. And, and, I, don't, I don't know if you're a fan of The Simpsons, but there was a, a, a classic episode of The Simpsons where they had this, the DJ 1000 or whatever it was called. Yeah. And it came up with all these kind of cliche things that DJs would say. Yes. And it goes, wow, this guy's good. <laughs> What's that? Um, was that clip from like, I think it was about 1990, how that comedian in Italy, he just dressed up as a robot. I have not seen. He goes, is anyone from this town? Go. <laughs> good. Yeah, no, 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 no. Set, if I've seen the link, I'll have to send it over to it. It's such a classic one. <laughs> oh, mate. But that's like it, isn't it? You, know, you, yeah. you can see the formulaic decision tree mm. moment of many, many jobs, which is why things like call centers yeah. which are just cost centers in reality. That's why a lot of AI is just brilliant for that. Mm. And it's also great for the human experience because actually sometimes AI hasn't had a bad day. You know, no. it hasn't forgotten something. It hasn't got a boss that it hates. It hasn't, it's not sitting out, it's not sitting there going, oh, I wish I was in the, I wish I was at the beach and God, I need to go see my mum again. You know, and all these human things that you do. Now, yeah. I've, worked in a call, I've worked in a call center. I was terrible at it. Um, and I've worked in sales centers. I wasn't good at that either. Uh, I'm, I'm a marketing guy and, and, and a chatter with folks. So my, um, you know, my, if we can, I know it sounds awful because a lot of people work in call centers and I understand that's a way of working and I'm not trying to undermine what they do, but I have a feeling that AI will be much better at doing it. Mm. It's a little bit like, you know, when we used to, people forget these times, we used to have a hundred accountants sitting there with these machines going kush, 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 with the yeah. punch machine. Yeah. Now, you know, Excel is just better mm. at doing it. It isn't a value judgment. It just is. That, now, if you then get Excel and an AI, I do a lot of work, let's say, with, with lots of companies very scared by this AI principle. And they're all trying to say, well, 
best thing for us to do is to try to stop it. And I'm like, no, because you're not going to. You know, the best thing for you is to actually augment your workforce with AI. That is the best thing to do, and do it now. You know, if you want, if you don't want all your lawyers to be replaced by robots, well, make sure your, your lawyers have the power of robots as well, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know, start to give them these tools now because, you know, law is especially one. And uh, I'm very, very, um, I know this interview very well. And, uh, you know, I've been warning them for about five years that, you know, the, the, uh, not just that the robots are coming, but, you know, they will be Ubered at some point very soon. Mm. Um, and I don't know if COVID will speed up that process or slow it down. But um, I, I know that um, I just think it's a bit sad that it's taken a global pandemic for uh, for things to change. Mm. Um, but I'm, I'm bizarrely positive about the potential of the future of the world, especially future of work, um, if we all survive. Yes, right. It's just basically <laughs> how much of a crisis can actually accelerate things, I think. Um, yeah, absolutely. It, yeah. You know, it's, an opportunity, it's an opportunity as well. But I suppose what I, what I do worry about apologies to interrupt there because I'm, I'm not emotion intelligent sorry um that's the thing i'm not good at is emotion intelligence ironically um is one of the things that i think there is a potential in my mind anyway this new jump that's going to happen it has to be with everyone yeah so this leaps can happen yeah now there's an opportunity here where there's a massive land grab where everyone just goes you know with the people who have the ta- the power and the technology and the sophistication they take all the money mm. yeah and I suppose, and this might be a bit bit heavy for this podcast, but it'd be interesting to see and or think about if you've got a series of robots or series of AI propositions inside your business and they create wealth, how does that then get to, because you're not paying them. Does that mm, make sense? Yes. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, so you get, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you get rid of the workers and you replace them with robots. And then so surely society is going to be like, ah, um, you're not giving anyone money here. And the company's like, yeah, it's efficient. We give them no money and we pay no tax and we make loads. Goodbye. Yes. <laughs> and the government has no money to pay for anything. Yeah, that's a, that's, that's a tricky proposition, mm. really. Uh, well, that's the, that's the Amazon proposition, isn't it, at the moment? It the is, yeah. The proposition is, yeah. The more it does, the more it does and more it, um, I was about to say weaponized, but that's not true. The more it, technology, it puts technology as front of house, in a lot of their things and China's done brilliantly well in loads of different things here and you know Amazon's not far behind but the more and more it uses computers and the less and less it uses people the more and more money it makes the more efficient it becomes and you know Jeff Bezos is about to become a trillionaire absolutely you know, yeah you know the guy from Facebook Mark Zuckerberg I think through this pandemic has now increased his wealth by 23 billion dollars you know I don't know if we can continue doing that um, without other people's thinking it's a bit mean yeah, absolutely. It's it's, you know, it's a strong case for like a UBI or a you know. Well, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Some sort of rebuild of society. Yeah. So it's well, this is the but this is the future of work, yeah. isn't it? The irony yeah. for future of work might be, and I've said this in Britain and got booed at quite a lot. But there we go. Um, but Spain have literally today, just today, um, on the the first of June, they have introduced university a universal basic income. They have introduced it today. You know, um, Denmark has been doing. Yeah, exactly, exactly, yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, but but also you know, but also very sensibly because if they don't, and then people have nothing, then yeah. those people will riot. That's and right. I bet it costs, it costs a lot more to get a load of tanks and a lot. I know it sounds awful, but I imagine it costs more with a load of tanks and a load of police than it does to give someone enough so they can afford bread. That's, that's right. That's just yeah. economic. Yeah. It's just. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I promise I won't. We're going to talk about America, so I'm not going to talk about America. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, I'm talking about future technology, um, I want to take one step further. How, where do you see quantum computing fitting in all this in like five, ten years' time? Oh, Lord, that is, that's a classic. Um, right, so <laughs> I've got to be careful again with words here. A couple yeah. of months ago, about six months ago, if you'd said to me, because I'm a futurist, it's my job, and you said, okay, give me the prediction in five, ten years, I'd have said, no problem, here it is. Yeah. And mm. now, and this is the scary thing about being a futurist at this present time is, the, the answer is I don't know. Yeah. Because I think the world's going to change so fundamentally in the next year that to say five years is almost to be, you know, is almost being silly. To say 10 years is insane. There's no yeah. way. I mean, we could literally all be holograms, you know. I, I joked years and years ago, I thought it was a great uh, stand up gig I could do when um, I talk about my, you know, my, uh, my daughter's uh, new boyfriend is the beam of light. 
and it's just, it's just a hologram and an AI system. And I'm like, and I'm like, like and my daughter comes in. And I'm like, but he can't eat. Yes, he can, Father. But Father, of course he can. I go, no, no, but darling, you're just a hologram. How dare you? You're such a hologramist, Dad. I can't believe how old-fashioned you are. I love him. It's an AI system. Ran, it's ran from a company in Japan. No, it's not. It's my favorite. I'm, we're, we're, we're leaving. We're leaving to Mars. <laughs> to Mars and we'll never see you again. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I, sorry, that was a bit of a rant. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's the thing. Quantum computing, to, to bring it into to a real thing, that we're pretty close to, to, to it. I think we've <laughs> got to be a bit careful. Um, it's a bit like fire, you know, and Prometheus and all this kind of stuff. You know, we've got to be careful what we unleash when we start kind of giving people this kind of power. Um, mm. And also, if the if the AI machine behind lots of this stuff, I mean, edge computing is different to quantum. Yeah. yeah. So the edge computing massively behind exactly what we need. We need, you know, we're doing it anyway. I mean, look at the power of, you know, the Huawei system, the, the Atlas 9000 and all these things are insanely quick and brilliant. And they already exist. So it's not the future. That's already now. Quantum, from my knowledge of quantum, doesn't quite exist yet. And my, mm. my guess is, I think we will have to politically and socially be in a much better place to actually say, yeah, let's bring that on. Yeah. I think bringing it on now is a bit like giving a five-year-old a gun. Yeah. You know, I think that you know, <laughs> yes. it could end up, it could be get very messy very quickly. Mm. Or the gun could then become sentient and then go, oh, I don't think we need you. I've decided yeah. you're all a bit stupid. So I'm, you know, I'll, I'll let you guys sort yourselves out. You know, so I know it sounds terrible for a futurist to say, A, I'm not going to say anything about five to 10 years, which is exactly what you don't want. Uh, but quantum computing will be part of it. As I say, I think that we just have to have much cleverer um, political and legal and even social leaders. Um, yep. You know, technologists aren't always the best at um, providing human beings with. <laughs> I've got a personal friend, a friend of a friend actually, a chap called Demis Havlis, who um, is part of the. In fact, he started uh, Deep Deep Mind and um, and uh, and then sold it to Google. And it's it's a, he's like the poster child for AI in in the UK. Very famous chap. Very clever chap, actually. Did a lot of stuff in gaming stuff off with, but anyway. Um, and they were having chats two or three years ago that scared the living daylights out of me, um, you know, around quantum computing and, you know, the, you know, just the, just the whole singularity concept, you know. Um, and, and what those guys were talking about is so much into the future. You know, it, it like literally, this is how, quantum computing will sort out the problem with, you know, global currencies and, and you know, all sorts. And, it, you know, it's, it's not, just about computing power it's about political power yeah and um that scares me dave i'm not gonna lie to you it scares me yeah. too because i think it's was like almost like the splitting of the atom you know you could build a bomb <laughs> build cheap energy i think that's exactly what yeah. quantum computing is so uh, yeah. yeah brilliant brilliant I've, analogy yeah 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 we need, to, we need not just to smash it with the hammer and then say oh what happened oh, yeah well, that's right you know you got you know you could have good and could evil processes out but i think it's yeah, and I think we, I think I think we've got to be aware though that you know just like with a nuclear power station, and I, by the way, I don't know anything about nuclear power stations. All I know is Homer Simpson's bit. That's all I know. <laughs> no, it's obviously quite complicated, and you need to have a kind of casing around stuff, don't you? Yeah. I think that's what we haven't got at the moment. We haven't got the social casing we might need, um, you know, and we haven't got the political kind of power. Uh, you know, if you unleash this right now, and you give the, you know, I imagine if you gave quantum, I mean, they may have already given quantum computing to Donald Trump. Who knows? But I imagine at the moment it would not be very good to give um, a very right-wing series of governments quantum computing. That's a guess. Yeah. Um, but, but at the same time, that same government might say, we need quantum computing to process all the data uh, to control the population. Mm. Um, and, you know, I, um, I suppose I'm a little bit, uh, not necessarily concerned by that proposition. It's just, um, you know, as you say, it's a bit like the nuclear bomb. Mm. And human beings, you know, nuclear power human beings don't have the greatest um history should we say of doing the right thing straight away yes <laughs> we tend to make bombs first <laughs> and then, yeah. then go back to energy sources yeah right um on a lighter subject i know it's we've been talking about what is actually driving your curiosity right now um Ooh. Good question. What is your, I, I tell you, it's, it's obviously changed quite a lot in the last little while um, because of the you know, political situations that, that are being what they are and me being, you know, brown. Um, so I get a little bit more, I'm a bit more hypersensitive around the politicals. Um, however, before that, my biggest area of, of interest is to do with health tech. Um, I think that is, that, that is a huge 
um, area, not only for economic growth, but actually for social impact and what we you know, tech for good, tech for all and tech for good. And it's one of those things that you know, Elon Musk and people are all going to outer space and they're going to Mars and all this other stuff. And I'm like, actually, the, the, the key thing we should be doing is looking into inner space, mm. not going for outer space. You know, the, we, we don't know enough about human beings. The Human Genome Project didn't do what it was meant to do. You know, it basically cracked about three to five percent of stuff because actually we're a lot more complicated. And it's much more to do with, with other things, other markers. And every human being is different. So, you know, Dave, you could be completely healthy, you know, eating loads of potatoes and, you know, and having a steak and all these different things and beer. And if I have those things, if I have them, I'm absolutely, they are delicious, by the way, and I love them. And I'm not saying I've never had them. I have them when I shouldn't. But for me, that triggers in, into my body a series of chemical reactions that means I'm much more prone to get type 2 diabetes. Yeah. But that doesn't mean I can say to everyone, even though I am a great believer in the low carb, high fat diet, because I think it's massively important and it's a real quick win for a lot of people to not get ill or not get ill through these inflammatory and sometimes almost self-caused illnesses, um, which cost you know governments billions of pounds and company. I mean, in the UK alone, I think from types of diabetes, you know, it, it's something like 23 billion pounds because of the complications and because of it. And I won't say 80% because some people think it's about 80%. Let's say it's 50% of people could actually put that into remission themselves by controlling their diet. Now, very few people like that information because they get a bit cross and they go, but this is the reason why we make drugs. It's like, no, no, drugs don't make you better. Yeah, they really don't. They just stop it for a bit. They don't necessarily make you better. Now with other things, yes, drugs make you better. The human body cannot always heal itself. Um, but with uh, type of diabetes, for example, and other ones, you know, so, my area of interest has been health tech for, for quite a while. And it's whether you get down to the, the deeper biological level of things that and I, don't, I don't want us to go down this way, but it, it, we might do. So things like manipulation of genes um, is, a, is a concern of mine, if I'm honest. But I can see why people think that would be a way to do it. Um, but actually, there's a much more quicker wins. Like there's concierge services, like Alexa could tell you off and tell you off, uh, you know, eating a potato when you shouldn't do you know literally you could have you could have a system where your computer goes are you sure you really want to buy that those chocolate bars weren't you not meant to do that you know or your fitbit beeps beep, yeah. your fitbit and it beeps yeah yeah but your fitbit also ties into your blood sugar which also ties into something else with so these things already exist yeah yeah but all that data links into then your shopping habits and so in the uk this thing i was trying to build a couple of years ago where you'd actually have it would know what you'd bought how much you'd run i mean it basically would know what you know which is lots of stuff but actually it would remind you and just give you a gentle prod and go you do know that you know you haven't eaten lettuce for a bit you know you, you really should be looking at your stomach have you having any well you know when was the last time you ate something good for your stomach or for your gut you know when was the last time you had you know uh, kimchi or whatever whatever you need you know? yeah. instead of just saying it would then put it into your shopping basket it just gently remind you say look look just spend five more quid and you know, you'll just be a bit better. You'll just be a bit better. Um, you know, just like your Fitbit beeps at you and goes, you know, it's it's nine fifty, it's nine fifty now, or you know, you haven't you haven't moved for an hour, Dan. Get up off your fat old behind and do yes. some walking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but all we need, but the, the technology, all the technology is out there to do all these things already, and that's why I think it's exciting around health tech because actually, health tech is how do you change individuals' culture? Mm. How do you change their, their behavior? And yeah. I think technology is, is one of the best and more effective ways of doing it. By the time you've gone to your doctor, I don't know what it's like in Australia, it might be different because you guys are kind of, I'm, and again, this might be terribly, um, uh, this might not be true, but I've always positioned you as much more outdoorsy type people who yeah. are fitter. Yeah. Uh, than those Brits because it's usually horrid and cold and wet and we just sit here eating potatoes. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> but, uh, but I would say is I think there's a huge opportunity in a lot of places uh, and even in a lot of developing countries uh, where you would presume that health uh, would be a higher on the agenda. Um, so there's huge problems in India, huge problems in China, huge problems in Brazil with type 2 diabetes. Uh, and I think and that's just one of the, the problems, you know, and obesity and these other things, that um, is a real interesting, uh, probably, it's a real interesting problem for, for us all to solve. And I think technology is the best way to do it. Yeah, that's got, got great applications here in Australia. I mean, with our Aboriginal population, it's very high rates of type yeah. two diabetes are yeah that's really that's a really neat oh, no, idea huge huge i had the joy of um i had the joy because I, I i had type two diabetes and then reversed it through diet and exercise so yeah i wrote a book about 
that as well. And so, um, so yeah, no, I'd, I've done a lot of research into, I say I've done a lot of research, I've read a lot of the research that was done around the Aboriginal population and around hmm. the, the island population. And it's, uh, it's fascinating to, um, I've got to be careful again with words, because a lot of people then would point to genetics and say, aha, this proves the genetic argument. But actually, it doesn't. It doesn't prove the genetic argument at all. It, it, it proves the microbiome argument. It's it, absolutely. It's bi, it's, yeah. it's it's bi, it's biology. It's um, the use. The biodome. It's what's happening inside your stomach and your gut. Yeah. And how that works now yeah. is uh, you. Know, and a lot. And, and this happens to a lot of. You know, if you go back in history a bit too far, if you go back in history. The Red Indians. You know, when the Americans went over, you know, mm. they, they died a lot through smallpox, etc. But they also then died from eating weird food they never ate before. Exactly and, right. You know, yeah. and, Drinking far too much alcohol, which they'd never been able to process before. Mm. Um, you know, and, and surprisingly enough, the human body, when it gets addicted to something, likes it quite a bit, and then it, which causes you know you get rampant rates of alcoholism. And then the, unfortunately, that people then go, oh well, that that proves it. Then that proves that you know those type of people they can't control themselves. Uh, so aha, but actually, it's it's almost the opposite. It's those type of people their microbiome gets addicted to substances that, that genetically they or not even genetic sorry historically they weren't used to mm. for thousands of years um and then and as you know um that uh, it can create social problems which you guys in australia must probably see see more than we do we don't really have uh, britain was invaded so many times that we don't really have an indigenous population uh, <laughs> yes. you know, you know, we were invaded by everyone continually for ages yes yeah, right <laughs> yeah and can you just Finally, can you give us a light-hearted story just to finish off the show with? Yeah, of course. Um, I've yeah. got, 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 I've got a few, I suppose. Yes. Um, so um, I, I have the uh, the joy of doing a lot of, um, <laughs> a lot of traveling, a lot of traveling, and um, and I won't. We did a bit of traveling. I was, I was going to be going over to Nigeria and uh, and doing a talk for like fifteen thousand. I know one hundred fifty thousand. There's huge numbers of people in this streaming in and there was 15,000 people going to be in this, the, the stadium and and, uh, and this whole stream I was going to teach them all how to start their own business and how to do marketing and all sorts of things and, uh, and I was about, about to get on the plane a couple of years ago about to get on the plane and then uh, my wife had a great point and she said has anyone uh, have they bought have they bought you life insurance for this gig have they bought you any life insurance and I was like um, well no 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 but, but it was right I'm sure life insurance is covered in this moment and, uh, and so I talked to the organizer and they were like no, no, we, we, we can't cover your life insurance. We can't cover your life insurance. You're going to go to Nigeria. And, and what made me smile, though, is just because I've got a couple of mates in Nigeria. And they were like, well, it's quite tasty. It's a bit like Mexico City. It's, it's, not, it's not that bad. But literally, the universities that I was working, they wouldn't, they wouldn't insure my life for going over to Nigeria. <laughs> and it still makes me giggle now because I, I, I didn't go. I didn't go in the end. You know? It's one of my biggest regrets that I didn't go and do this massive gig. And it's only because they put the fear of God into me. And I, I always... <laughs> <laughs> I think that's so, it's so small, isn't it? But it's such a, yeah. you know, if, if they just said, yes, of course we'll enjoy it. I'd have been on the plane. Everything would have been fine. Nothing would have happened, I'm guessing. Uh, but just them saying, oh, maybe you should get your own insurance was enough just to trigger uh, a bit of fear inside me. And, uh, and I suppose that, 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 you know, that's kind of a metaphor for lots of things is, uh, you know, try not to get, and this is, and I give this advice now because I live my life vicariously, um, but you know, try not to get triggered by those moments where people say, where people take much bigger decisions than you that can be based on computer algorithms that have nothing to do with reality. You know, nothing to do with reality at all. And uh, so that, that always makes me smile is the fact that, um, <laughs> of course, now we could have just done it online and we could have just through a Zoom call. I uh, wouldn't have to go to Nigeria at all, but it makes me smile that, uh, that you know, we've got to be um, very humanly aware that other people's opinions uh, might, uh, might, <laughs> might change our lives too. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Hope that helps. Well, Dan, thanks so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. And uh, where can we find you? Oh, right. Okay. Well, but, you know, if you want to find out more about that kind of stuff, I'm up to you. I'd say LinkedIn's the best one to go for. So it's yep. Dan Sodergren. So that's S O D E R G R E N. Um, half Jamaican, half Swedish. Wow. No one, ever sees, no one ever sees the Swedish side. Don't know why not, but there you go. <laughs> you know, by the way, I stand. Apparently, I stand in a very Swedish way. Um, so, so it's Dan D A N and then S O D E R G R E N. Um, I say my the, the uh, companies that I work for. One is the Landing, which is the tech and media hub in Media City. So if you're ever looking to uh, move your startup from Australia or from Perth up to the, to Manchester, please do. Much cheaper than London, uh, much better place to do it. Um, but also this flock as well. So your flock. So it's simply yourflock.co.uk. And um, I'll have a chat with Dave after this as well. And uh, I'll see if I can organise some free passes. So if you've got a company and you want to look at uh, looking at your culture 
and how your remote workers are all fitting together and who might be best remote working in this new normal, um, then uh, I'll uh, try to get some passes uh, so you can do it for free. Oh, that sounds awesome. Thank you very much. No problem. Happy to. Yeah. Hi guys, it's Dave from Time Outs Media Lab. If you like what you see, like and subscribe down below and make sure you support me on Patreon. This is the cat, the 12 hats, signing out.